Hey Nana and Papa, time for another video. And actually it's about this piece over here. Uh, it's actually the piece I think I've been most excited about making since being here in LA. The title of it is cross hatching, which is a term actually in drawing when you shade with lines that intersect with each other. So instead of like stippling, which is with dots or just like shading, coloring in, cross hatching is kind of this repetitive line making that happens to then create shadows, to create depth, and to show more of a filled image. And I think with this piece, uh, that's kind of what I'm going for. I was really, I was just intuitively making this thing. I'd originally had the steel rod and I had set it up, kind of like a flagpole, you know, setting out uh, from a house, like a little flag stand. But I needed a string to kind of hold the support because it wasn't there wasn't a deep enough kind of crook to like set the thing in. And then that's when I realized, oh, maybe I could like make the line, like this mason line, the top pink mason line. Maybe I could make that be perfectly level, and that could be what holds up the steel rod. And then in that process, I realized what what could this bottom handhold be that can hold this steel rod. And I decided to go with this sternum, no, not sternum, sacrum kind of shape, which is the back of the tailbone, like our pelvis, it is the tailbone. And it's, it's kind of, it's like the seat of our being. It's kind of like the thing that we're sitting on all the time, <laughs> but it's also like our weight is always on that part of us. And it's what's, it's kind of what's holding us together. In, in uh, childbirth, it's like literally the part that's like holding like the baby in place, the pelvis and like the, you know, all that, all that stuff that's happening. But this is still at the back, kind of like holding it all together. And sacrum actually comes from the word sacred. Uh, and I think it's because early on in the medical field, I'm totally making this up, but I would imagine in the medical field, they even knew then that there was like something sacred about this part of the bone that kind of was holding us and that we were sitting in. Um, and so that's why that shape is the way it is at the bottom. Um, but so now I've talked about the sacrum and the steel rod and the yuck pink mason line. And there's also the string in the back that's a little knit hammock with an oyster in it. And so the reason why this piece has all these components is when you look straight on, it looks like a cross. And that's kind of the intention. And I'm thinking a lot about the masculine form of religion, which is like having structure and hierarchy and having rules and laws and morality that's based in right action and right rules and right principles. And there's something really containing about that that can be helpful and feel safe and comfortable. And I'm wanting to honor that desire for a safety with religion. Um, but then, and you can only see actually a perfect, directly from my point of view, do you see the Mason line to be perfectly level and the cross to be formed. And in that process, you can't actually see the oyster. But then as soon as you shift, down or up or side, you can see the oyster. And that's just for me to show that the cross works for me, but that doesn't mean it works for everybody. And and frankly, my, my form of faith right now is less patriarchal in the sense that I think there needs to be some fluidity and like flexibility around some of these things and it doesn't need to be so tied to doctrine for us to encounter God that I think God is bigger than that, that God can be an embodied experience, that God can be fully experiential and that the Bible and the word can be these really instrumental ways for us to encounter God, but also that being in nature or being fully present with my fellow man or woman or person can be truly an encounter of the divine. And so that's kind of what the oyster represents is like this very natural, like 
warm, fluid, dependent, interdependent kind of thing in the back. That's kind of lying in the background. It doesn't take the forefronts, but is ultimately how we how we know God, especially when we're kids. And so this piece is kind of trying to hold all of that at once. The sacred masculine, the sacred feminine, and the shifting perspectives that can help us understand all of those and the benefits and the and the, the blessings and the curses of both of those. And so, uh, yeah. And so one thing that I really like about this piece is that just the relationship to the wall, the oyster is leaning comfortably against the wall in this hammock from a single point. And it's it's very dependent on this point, but it's also like, it can, it can handle it. It can take a to, a to and fro and it can wave. But the cross, the main part of the cross, the steel beam, the bar is really sturdy, it's really heavy, and it needs these two points to hold it up. And it can it seems seemingly strong and like in its place from one perspective, but then you realize that it's totally dependent on these two points. Perhaps the, the the two laws that are the most important to the to the church, which is loving God and loving your neighbor. Um, but I love that there is a, still a, a dependence, even though there's a, a thought that it's independent and independently motivated, and independ independently secure. But at the end of the day, it's it's not even touching the wall. But it needs all these other things for it to actually have a relationship to the wall. Whereas the oyster's okay touching the mystery of the wall, right? Like the wall is, the wall is there, whether we accept it or not. Whereas the, the bar wants like some distance. It needs like just a little bit of distance. It's like too much for like the mystery of the wall to be like fully encountered. But we'll have like these, these people that can help us hold up this thing and, you know, make sure we're, we're safe. Anyways, this this piece, I, I'm trying to put words to it, and I think I hope I hope I <laughs> gave you some good insights to what I'm trying to do here. But I think that's what's cool and interesting about this piece is that there's a lot going on, even though there's like not very many elements to it, but how they all relate to one another: the tension, the balance, the dependence, and the colors, and the yeah. I'm just uh, I'm really excited about cross hatching, and I hope that gives you some more insights as well as to what this piece is about. I think the fact that I'm getting dreamy and misty and uh, a little whimsical and yeah, that feeling that I get from encountering this piece, I think is, is what I'm going for a lot with my work. I want it to be reflective and introspective and confronting but also expansive and to help us see different perspectives and know ourselves and our neighbors and God more deeply. So anyways, I hope, I hope this helps you see God and see yourself and see one another more deeply today. And uh, yeah, I love y'all and I miss you. So, I'll see you later.